I presented that offer, and the seller wadded it up and threw it across the table in my face. Oh, my goodness. And all the while, his fiance was going, but Don, I really want to live on the yacht. As they walked out with the wadded up green contract, walked out behind them and said, just think about what your dreams are worth. Mm. And he turned back around and came in and said, read it out, signed it. No way. Wow. So I think, you know, people do want to live their dream. And sometimes it's hard to let go of one thing to get to the next step. Welcome to another edition of TM3 Impact, and I am excited because today I've got my purple on, I've got my purple pocket square, I am ready because today we have Deborah Janes, the founder of Niche Properties on the TM3 Podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm excited that you're here, Deborah. I love the purple. Isn't that great? Yes. I, I, I mean, I, I did that on purpose. Well, and I appreciate it. You know, it, it was perfect, <laughs> perfect branding, right? Absolutely. So, Deborah, I want you to tell everybody as we start off, I want to know your San Antonio story. Kind of how did you come to live in this city? Did you grow up here? Kind of tell me a little bit of that background, cliff note version. I was born here and raised here. And have lived here, I lived here all my life until I went to college. And then I didn't go far, just went to San Marcos, you okay. know, just so I could come home on weekends, basically. Yeah. And um, I just have loved it all my life. We moved to Uvalde for 14 years and then came back. And when we came back, um, decided instead of San Antonio, we'd stop right west of there. And so we stopped in Bernie in 92. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you've been in Bernie since 92. 92. Okay. Very Boy, interesting. It it's totally different. Mm-hmm. So so tell me a little bit about uh, San Antonio. I would imagine back then, did you end up graduating high school in, in out of Bernie or did you go? No, that, that would have mm-hmm. been, where did you go to high school? In Uvalde? No, here, here? at Jefferson High School. Oh, at Jefferson. Jefferson. Most beautiful architecture. Texture in the city. It's one of the coolest looking schools ever. Isn't it? It's straight out of a movie. It is. That's super cool. I did not realize you went to Jefferson. Mm -hmm. What was that like going to Jefferson uh, back in high school? In the 70s? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. (laughs) It was fun. Oh my goodness. There was just, it was just such a different time. You know, we, what we considered you know, bad behavior then would be considered like nothing right. now, you know, but right. we had wonderful teachers and made wonderful friends for life. In fact, I'm still f- close friends with two of my uh, first grade classmates. And oh, we, get out. we went through elementary, junior high, high school and college. Well, I take it back. One of them branched off and went up a little further north to that Austin town. Oh, know, there you go. UT. Yep. So yep. we huddled there in San Marcos and had even more fun. I bet. So you went to high school, uh, to college at San Marcos, which was at that time, it was Southwest. Southwest Texas, Texas State, State University. Yes. yes, sir. And what did you study? Music. 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 Mm-hmm. S- singer. Uh, it was that kind of your thing? Singing? It, it was, I was a vocal major in an English okay. minor. Okay. Very good. Okay. I, I, I understand the English minor. I know we've <laughs> talked a lot about that. I love it. Grammar hammer. That's grammar hammer. I love <laughs> no, no. it. So, so, so when you, did you decide early on that you wanted to be a teacher? At what point did you decide that? You know, I think it was just pure evolution because my brother who was significantly older than me, I shouldn't say that he'd be mad at me, but eight years older than me. Yeah. He went into the education, music education field okay. and his wife is music educator. And then somehow or another by attrition, I had some abilities and started playing the piano when I was about three. And I had some great music teachers that okay. inspired me to want to do it. And so I had that opportunity and a wonderful one in Uvalde, actually. Okay. When we moved there in 79. 79? 78. 78. 78. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This teacher made an impression. You're talking about a teacher that you oh, had? Yes, yeah. Absolutely. You remember I his had, or her name? Mm-hmm, Mr. Yeah. Sellers. He was at Southwest uh, in San Marcos. Okay. And he was so, so strict. And he really didn't have a great voice, which oh, interesting. was interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, he certainly had perfect pitch, but 
Yeah. Not really, actually. Yeah. I yeah. Think of it. <laughs> but he demanded so much excellence of us mm. that it was an unforgettable, unforgettable experience. You remember that. Like, okay, mm-hmm. so you you uh, graduate from Southwest and you decide um, you went right into teaching? Did you go right no, away? No, actually I didn't. I, um, start, I just, you know, I sold advertising Get out of here. for the Uvalde Leader News, which is still published by my then neighbor, no Craig way. Barnett. Yes. Tell me about that, selling it ads. Was, that, I've never heard this story. Oh, my gosh. You know, walking the streets in, that sounds weird, walking down the sidewalks yeah. in Uvalde, Texas, in the heat of the summer oh, while goodness. expecting the first child, you know, like any moment, was, you know, challenging to say the least. Yeah. But it was rewarding, yeah. and I got to know a lot of the business people through that path yeah. that I took. And, um, you know, just did somehow. You sell out of ads? Did you I remember did. selling out of ads? I started their bridal section. Oh, no I was way. the yeah. first one, and I suggested to Mrs. Hornby, God rest her soul, beautiful, wonderful lady, um, that we should do that in yeah. June. And she said, well, absolutely. And so we did. And it's still being no. done every June. Get out. Yeah. So so as you look back on that, uh, what do you think if you were to go, okay, hey, what did you learn most about selling advertisement? Like what was the, the keys that, for your success or, or, or just the keys to being successful at it? You know, just actually I always ask for the owner. Mm-hmm. That's that good. Wrong? No, that's good. <laughs> yeah. My mother used to tell this story in band. I was in band in high school. And we, have, of course, had to sell the chocolate bars. Oh, right? yes, 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 yes. And I went into Tom Benson Chevrolet and asked for Mr. Benson. Get out of here. And I was escorted directly into his office. And How old were you? Me. High school? This is high school? 16. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> so, and what did he say when you walked in there? I'll take them all. No way. He bought the whole box. Of course. Wow. Such a nice man. But see, that's, I think that's a great principle for, for people that, uh, you know, you got to understand that there are gatekeepers that can stop you from being successful. There are people that can stop your success and you got to know who to go to. Oh, absolutely. And you knew right away. Talk to the business owner. <laughs> exactly. And, you sold, and in the bridal, like what a great idea. Then they're still that's doing fine. it to this day. Mm-hmm. Same owners. No, Mrs. Different Hornby, owners? correct. Um, it's actually, Craig Garnett is the publisher now yeah. and editor. And his son, I taught his son actually um, in private school when I taught music in Uvalde. Yeah. And he's the co-editor, would that be Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so it's only gone from one family, you know, another. it's kind of morphed That's and blended cool. to the next That's one. really cool. So first teaching job. Was that a private school? Is that your first teaching job? Well, my first teaching job, actually, when I first moved there, I, after I did, you know, some advertising sales, yeah. I subbed at oh. Rob Elementary. And at Rob? At in Rob. The, the Rob? At the Rob Elementary Oh my school. goodness. Uh-huh. It was, you know. That had to be surreal, really surreal when that, I did not know this, Deborah. It was so surreal. You know, my stepdaughter went there. My daughter attended Rob. You know, I said that was wow. my first substitute teaching job and I was there a lot. Yeah. Um, seems like somebody was having a baby or something all the time. So I, right. I subbed a lot there, but then I went to private school and taught pre-K through third. Pre-K through third at music. At St. Phillips. Yes. Oh, that's fun. It was fun. That's fun. One most wonderful kids ever. They would do anything for me. Yeah. And, and the parents were the yeah. same way. Same way. I would mm-hmm. imagine. Yeah. Uh, did, now were you basically music uh, of the, the recorders, like a little bit of everything or were you more? No, just choral. But we did full on productions in the opera house with light, sound, et cetera, except, you know, we had parents that would volunteer for that because it was a pretty big venue. Yes. Um, But we had a blast. That's fun. That's fun. Now, do you, what did you like most about teaching? Because I, I look back on my career teaching, there was a part about teaching where 
you could you could stand in front of them and you had their just utmost attention, like just seeing every kid's eyes kind of leaning in. That was exhilarating, right? Absolutely. Now, I, now obviously you had to earn that attention as a teacher. You know, you have to earn it because they're not going to just give it to That's you, great. right? But what was it for you that that you really loved the most about teaching? I think the the love that the children showed me. I was the music teacher. I'm the yeah. fun one, yeah. you know. So while I had to be strict because it was a large group of kids, yeah. great satisfaction of the way that the kids showed their respect by, mm -hmm. you know, opening their mouths to sing, yeah. not singing consonants, singing yeah. vowels only. And matching pitch because I taught little bitties, you know, yeah. through fifth grade. And then by fifth grade, they were all pros. They, they knew what to do. They knew what to do. What was your biggest production that y'all put on? Do you um, remember did, the biggest one? We did a Disney extravaganza. Oh, in like all spring. Disney songs? It was all Disney songs. And each grade had a different song and a different costume and a different choreo uh, dance or choreography that yeah. went with their song. And um, it was just wonderful. I just ran across the VHS tape, and I promise I'm going to have it digitized. Oh, you and have to. I'm going to have to, like, probably send some of my former students. Yes. So they can show their children their what they did. elementary school. That would be time. amazing. I actually found some tapes of me when I was teaching in fifth grade. And I was trying to show it, but the, but the videos started to degrade and there's no voice. It's just video. And oh, it's don't all, tell me no, that. no, no. I'm telling you that because you got to do it quick. I do. Do well, it quick wow. because those little bitty tapes for whatever reason, oh, no, I, these, these are little, the but you're the big, the big ones. Yeah. yeah. That probably will work out better. I think the smaller ones for whatever yes, reason, and they're not, I mean, this was from 2000, I would say 2001, two and three, a bunch of those videos are unusable now. You can't, oh, you can't even no. watch them. Yeah. It's a bummer. Oh, it's a, I'm it's so a bummer. Sick. I'm hoping but like, so, and there's actually a gentleman right here down the street that does it. Really? DPC. I think it's right here. They do video transfer. Huh. Um, Great and then of know. course there's, there's a bunch online, but do it quickly for yes, sure. Yes, I will. Yeah. I'll make okay. Point. So now you, you, you become, how long did you teach for? Really often I taught for 14 years off and on because yeah. when I, I should preface this with, I taught for, I think five years at St. Phillips okay. while my daughter attended. Okay. And then I went to the, I started the secondary, the first secondary music program in Uvalde Consolidated School at the junior high. Okay. Well, Okay. Seventh and eighth graders <laughs> right after lunch and 40 of them. 40 seventh and eighth graders in, in one a, class. In one room. And me. <laughs> <sighs> it, it was it was daunting, but I have to say it was so satisfying. Yeah. Those children would literally walk from home to the square to sing. It was during Desert Storm. Okay. And yeah. so we would have gatherings at the square and such and do patriotic songs. And wow. There were some that literally walked in the, you know, that's Uvalde's in the Chihuahua yeah. Desert. It's, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah, very it's very hot. hot. It's very hot. So, How did you, like, what were you able to do? How long did you teach middle school? Oh, just two years. Two and years. Then I okay. Was done. Yeah, I did it for one year, but I did it at a charter school, right? Oh. It's a little different. It's a oh. little different. Okay. Yeah. Think, think charter. When you think charter, think it's kind of like a private style. You know, mm -hmm. they have they, mm -hmm. they have to get in. They have to apply. And this particular school was a lottery. It was a KIPP Academy, and it was you know we it was very 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 strict, like very strict. So they did. There was no it, there was no messing around. So mm -hmm. the kids were. I felt like it was pretty easy to teach because. It's like what, what you were you were able to do in your room. You you know the kids listened, and they you didn't have a lot of disruption. But how did you keep forty kids on task? It was tough because guess what's open the entire time? What's that? Their mouth. Oh, <laughs> that's true in Siggy. I mean, you, you got to sing. That's and, so true. But I wanted them to always know that they were mine because. Mm. These were children who, well, I did have football players and I did have a couple of cheerleaders in choir, yeah. but the majority 
of my other students really weren't in a group of okay. some sort. So this became their group ah, and they knew they were mine. That's interesting. So it really started to bond the kids because yeah. now they could have another identity besides sports. But if you don't play sports, right? Exactly. What What is your identity? Where mm -hmm. do you fit in? That's mm -hmm. interesting. I like that. Yeah, it was I like really, that. Really, really. So you did that for two years, in and middle then, school. and then, and then we you came moved. to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We moved Bernie. Oh, to, Bur to Bernie. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And why Bernie? Um, because of the schools, actually. Ah. Um, my friend that I mentioned earlier, sister in law, is an educator here in town, and um, I believe we were supposed to move to Kerrville, mm. and she said, no, 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 move to Bernie. Yeah. Because back in 92, you know, it was a well-kept secret. Yeah. Nobody knew. So the schools yeah. were just magnificent. They still are oh, exemplary yeah. schools, yeah. but we made a conscious decision to choose Bernie for the schools for our daughter. Mm. And she started seventh grade and graduated. Yeah, and then went to Baylor. which that would have been what they didn't even have Bernie South and North back oh, at that time. Oh, no. They didn't even have that. No, we were 4A, Bernie High yeah. School, Bernie Junior High, Is and it? two elementaries, Fabra and Currington, and that was it. And that was in 92? That was mm -hmm. around 92? Mm -hmm. So we played Bernie in the playoffs in 94. No, 93. Oh, in 1993. Gosh. Yeah, in the basketball. Yeah. They whooped us. <laughs> They whooped us. Well, the oh, they can shoot. Athletic yeah. department at Bernie is just as strong yeah. today. Oh no, for I mean, sure. Back then, as it is today, for sure. And some of the same. Actually, the athletic director mm -hmm. was a coach when my daughter attended high school. Uh, He's still there, Coach yeah. Leach. Coach what Leach, a okay. wonderful man! He's touched so many people. And he's still and there. He's still there, wow. and was very, very good friends with the late Sam Champion. Who okay. Champion High School yeah. was named for, yeah. and we were fortunate enough to have our daughter under his um, guidance through high school, all That's through cool. high school, and he chose her to lead the graduating class of 98 in the Star Spangled Band. No way. Yeah. That's one of my proudest moments. That's super cool. Yeah, I didn't know good. your daughter sang too. She's got a beautiful voice. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Okay. Acapella. So now you get to San Antonio. Is this when real estate started? Is this when you thought about real estate? Like when does that door start to open up? <laughs> When we couldn't afford anything in Bernie, you know, it, mm. even back then, you know, it was pretty pricey compared to Uvalde, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For so sure. we rented a little house off Ranger in Ranger Creek mm -hmm. subdivision, right? Yeah. And as it turns out, our first house, we could see from our front porch in Ranger Creek subdivision on Ranger Creek Road. It yep. was a 1910 farmhouse that hadn't been lived in since the 50s. Oh, wow. And so we bought that and just started, you know, building from there. Yeah. But it was because I had a wonderful mentor, the late Nancy Billingsley, okay. um, started the house company on Main Street. It was it became an art gallery. It is now yeah. something else. I don't know what it is now. But um, she just, you know, was so good at mentoring me and um, teaching me not to be nervous, but to just be myself. Yeah. And not the house company. The house company. And it was cool. Um, she had it like a house. I mean, you walked in to this stucco building on the corner of, I think it was, oh, Tyson and Main Street. I don't yeah. remember what the side street is. But you walked into a big living room with leather sofas and a roaring fire in the fireplace. Mm. And it was so comfy. And then our desks were kind of scattered about. Yeah. And there was, there weren't a whole lot of us. It was very boutique. -y yeah. Then, so. Yeah. Interesting. And, That's really yeah, cool. It was. So did you, were you are, like diving right into real estate? Like she said, hey, mm -hmm. you want you to be an agent. So you went and got your license? I, ha I did. Yeah. I absolutely did. And I was so shocked. That I passed. Yeah. Deborah. You know, I really was. Deborah. I remember taking the prep and Johnny yeah. Rosenauer was the teacher and he taught to the test. He was, I think, one of the writers okay. of the test. Okay. And he got to the math part and he just was looking at me. And I guess I looked like a deer in the headlights, mm -hmm. more than likely. And so 
at the break, he came over. He was a big old cowboy. Yeah. Extended his arm, and I took his arm, and he walked in. He said, "No one has a gun to your head to yeah. take this test tomorrow." Yeah. He said, "No." Mm. He said, "No." Meet me at SAC. He taught math at SAC, oh. and so he gave me a two-hour tutoring tutoring lesson. Tutoring wow. lesson. Tutoring lesson. Um, and so I passed because of him. He said, ignore everything with a number or everything that even alludes to a number yeah. and go to the next one. You've nailed your terms. You've nailed your terms. Then go back yeah. and answer all the math questions. What a smart idea. Right? Yeah, it smart took idea. such a lot of the edge off for yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. And I remember bubbling in that Scantron dot right when the buzzer went off the oh, last you- math question. <laughs> <laughs> and you pass. No and biggie. And you pass. I yeah. Guess. So starting your real estate career, I, I, I always, I'm always curious. I mean, you look at, I mean, in terms of icon, in terms of what you've been able to do in the industry, right? Like you have done a lot and you've crushed it. Let's be honest, right? You're marketing everything, right? And I'm not just saying that because, you know, you're a client, but I'm saying that because it's true. It's just a reality, Right. Did you ever think that that small beginning would lead to this uh, niche properties? Did you ever think that they would lead to where you are today? No, I didn't think about this until probably last spring. Hmm. And it just sort of started evolving in my head how things would go and that you know, because real estate's very organic. It changes yeah. by the minute, you yeah. know. And I felt like that there was a niche for someone who specialized in luxury properties or any properties. Lord knows, right. you know, my first sale was eighty nine thousand dollars. Yes, we're going to go back so, to that in yes. Blanco, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> yes, and um, you know, it just it just sort of evolved. The color came, and I'm like, what? And I started googling, looking for other real estate companies with purple. Nothing, nothing. The only yeah. thing I could find was FedEx. Uh. Well. <laughs> Come September, everything I see is purple. Mm. Any ad on television, there were you know, clothing sites, bloggers and such that I watch and follow, and everything was purple. And I'm like, this is really strange. And then it occurred to me, I think it was something that I read that September is Alzheimer's and dementia. Man. Yes. And their signature color is purple. Yeah. And so... It's weird that it came to me because I had just lost my mom the year before to yeah. dementia. Yeah. And we have one of our teammates now who is taking care of her father in her home with her twin bo- her twin children. Yes. And we have another agent who just lost her father to Alzheimer's two months mm. ago. And so it all just made sense that we would do our best to honor those that yeah. suffer with that disease. Yeah, I and love it. Give it back. Yeah, I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. So, getting into real estate, I would imagine at that time, you, you know, you're te- you came from teaching, right? You come from a teaching background, and a lot of teachers become agents. A oh, yeah. lot of teachers, oh, and yeah. I, and I, I think there's a lot I to think that. It follows. It fits. Mm-hmm. It really does. I I, I do believe that uh, as a former teacher myself, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm, you know, in those in those beginning days of San Antonio selling in San Antonio, what was that like at that time selling? Because I mean, San Antonio at that time was, I mean, Bernie was small, San Antonio was small. Like, what was it like at that time? You know, going back when you remember, you know, selling. Obviously, you got to tell about your, the story about the first house too, because oh. <laughs> from when you got your license to when you sold your first house, how much time passed? Oh, it wasn't long. I was at the house company probably. Four months. Four months maybe. in. Okay. And one of the ladies got a call on on this eighty nine thousand dollar property on ten acres in Blanco, Texas. Okay. And um, to list it. Okay. And she said, "Deborah, do you want this?" <laughs> I said, well, "Yes, I would love." <laughs> it's my very first listing. Yes. So I go out and I meet this older gentleman. He was so so nice. Yeah. And um, I got the buyer. 
and so you had the listing up, and the buyer. You got both sides. sides. On my oh first my gosh. deal. Wow. And that was a lot of money back then. Yes. You know, $180,000 sale. Yes. So it was pretty great. Wow. Yeah. So $89,000 house took you four months, mm -hmm. right? From the time you listed it or like four oh, months no. in? How four long months it take? in. Okay, four and months in. It got wasn't it. long before this young man, it was a young single guy. Yeah. And he, you know, just wrote a check for it. And, thought it would be his weekend or kind of place. Isn't that, and that funny? Apparently what it is. I, I don't know what he's done with it since. Can you imagine what that would sell for today? Oh, my word, no. Ten acres in Blanco, Texas. In Blanco? It's exploded. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. exploded. Yeah, that would be worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So what do you remember from your mentors back then that really stood out to you today? Like what uh, uh, from the lady who started, what was her name again? That started Nancy the house company? Billingsley. Nancy. Tell me what, Na like what, what was... Like what is what was it that really clicked that that you go I I've got to follow what she's doing here you know she would put a deal together like a puzzle and in my experience now quite a bit it is still putting a deal together very rarely do they fall in your lap now. Yeah. I've been blessed on a couple of occasions where somebody said, no, call Deborah and do this, you know. And so there have been some easy ones. But for the most part, you know, it's the art of the deal. She yeah. was so smart. Yeah. The way that she very calmly would ask open-ended questions mm. and really make the client feel empowered into their decision as opposed to, you know, I guess a sales approach. Yeah. Yeah. Was she a former Persuading. teacher? Persuading. No, I, I don't. Mm -mm. Huh. No, she was always in real estate. Yeah. I You you said yeah, there's key two key things there that I think are really important. Empowering mm -hmm. your buyer or seller, Absolutely. which I think is huge. I do too. Right. And I, and I think that ended up, isn't that one of your your core value didn't that it end is. up it isn't is. that wild yes wow it and it's really wild because i saw an older ad in luxury home magazine um you know from whenever yeah. ago and we used the word empower oh then, you did and i still feel that this is very important that your client feels that they're important yep. that it doesn't it's not about the money, yeah. you know, although a lot of people I think do get in it with a, an expectation that that's yeah. all it's about. Right. And it's not that much different than teaching. No, for sure. You're, <laughs> that's so true. Right. So I got the empowerment and then open-ended questions, right? Like, like really diving in, like, what do you think, like when you, when you hear that now and what she was able to do, how does that pertain to how you work today? You know, I just still do do exactly what I think she does. You yeah. know, where do you see yourself or what are your dreams worth? Mm. I, and I'll never forget that line because the first sale contract I wrote in 94 yeah. in Bernie, maybe 93, was $400,000 cash. <sighs> Whoa. And this was a couple with four kids from Dallas that walked in the door on a Sunday, cold February, cold and rainy Sunday afternoon. And, um, you know, it was, the guy was, the seller was asking five ninety five or something. Yeah. It was on Bernie Lake. Yeah. And he said, nope, 400,000. Turns out he was a commercial broker from Dallas. He knew exactly what he was doing, but yeah. I presented that offer and the seller wadded it up and threw it across the table in my face. Oh, my goodness. And all the while, his fiance was going, but Don, I really want to live on the yacht. Yeah. And so as they walked out with the wadded up green contract on yeah. the table, yeah, I walked out behind them and said, just think about what your dreams are worth. Mm. And he turned back around and came in and said, spread it out. Signed it. No way. Wow. Yeah. So I think, you know, 
people do want to live their dream. And yeah. sometimes it's hard to let go of one thing to get to the next step. Yeah, yeah. And you've probably been a part of many deals where like the ego, the pride, sure. like 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 a low offer can really offset a homeowner. You've probably been a part of a lot of those <laughs> in your, in, right? But that open-ended question is so good. It's getting them to think outside the box, not just to think in terms of, hey, what am I losing here? Well, what are your, what are your dreams worth? What is it really worth, you right. know, to do what you, to go do what you want to do? Right. What are you, you know? gaining? What are you gaining, right? Was that your, that was the biggest deal you had done to, up, up to that point? 400,000? That was the biggest deal ever in Kendall County to that point in a residential situation. Okay. You not know. like a ranch. No. Right, 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 Although, right. So, right. you know, back then you could buy Bernie ranches for under a half million, you know, which would wow. never happen now. No. So. No. Yeah. I, I could only imagine it, when you were writing that up, what, what was going through your mind, even just writing it up and presenting it? Um, you know, making sure that every blank was filled in. Yeah. You know, we didn't have computers then. Yeah. I take it back. We did only for MLS. Huh. Our biggie was the fax machine. Okay. When okay. the fax came along, we had arrived. Yes. Yes. We no longer had to drive from <laughs> Bernie to Blanco to get mm. an initial, you know, such as that. It was really, really very very interesting. That, that sped up. I didn't even think about the power of just sending the facts. Cause like now if someone said send a fax, I mean, obviously I know. when we I started laugh. luxury home magazine, like that was like, we had to do faxes. And I just you remember, did. yeah, like in 2011. And I remember going, I don't think anybody's using any faxes right now, you know, but <laughs> I ended up having people say fax me the contract. I yeah. mean, in 2011, which is hilarious to me. So, uh, but you know, that, that's just, that was, I guess there are some people are still using them, I you know? guess. I don't know. It might, it, but if you think about it, it is kind of easier in some regards, mm -hmm. right? Because it just spits out. You do this, you spit it back in. So date and time stamp. Yeah, it's kind of easier sometimes because you do it when you go to an uh, email. It can get a little squirrely sometimes because well, it's like many, I gotta find it. Yeah, you know, exactly. I gotta find the email. You know, out of so. a hundred thousand email in my inbox, you know. Now, when did you go from where after the home co company? Where did you go house next? Company. Yeah, house company, excuse house me. House company. Um, to the Dominion, I was driving to San Antonio a couple of times a week. Yeah. My parents lived there, and so I'd go see them, and I'd drive past that development, and I would think, man, that's really nice. And I tried to go in one time and, of course, got turned away at security. Um, yep, yep. I had no idea. And finally, it dawned on me to stop where it says sales pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I went Which in is there, the round building the that round I know. The round building yep. that I absolutely cut my teeth yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and I went in and met Joella Ginther. God rest her soul. Loved yeah. her. Yeah. And, you know, she said, do you think that your agents in Bernie would be interested to know that we have houses here in the Dominion that are starting at 200000 I said, no way. What? She said, yes. Mind you, Bernie had then been discovered in 94 and 95 by Southwestern Bell. Oh, which, okay. Which, I mean, everybody from Southwestern Bell. Moved to Bernie. We had 62 listings in all of Kendall County. Okay. So neighbors were selling to neighbors' friends, and, you know, it was just yeah. very, very low inventory. Okay. But... um. It was just driving past there, and I went in, and when she said that, I said, oh, absolutely, we want to know this. And so she came to our next sales meeting, just darling. And, and she was part of the development she team? She was part of the development ah, team. Ah, gotcha. With, for okay. Entco, absolutely. Okay. All right. Yes, and there were five or six people, ladies, yeah. who were there since it, they started selling lots on okay. the golf course driving range uh, out of a tent. Get out. And so now they're in this posh, you know, Mediterranean. It's such a cool building. Pavilion, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was like, there's no way I'll ever, ever get in these stores. Yeah. But when Joel left the house company, I handed her my card. And I said, if there's ever anything that I can do, I'll, you know, be happy to, whatever. She yeah. said, okay, well, I'll keep you in mind. Yeah. And lo and behold, about a month or so, she called me 
and said, would you be interested in being a substitute agent? Mm. I said, sure. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And I went in for the interview with the executive director, who is a dear friend now, and she said, no, no, we've already hired someone else who was yeah. Alice Joe Sanchez, Robert Elder's mother. Ah, okay, yes, yes. And I said, okay, well, I just wrote her a thank you note, and then I kept writing her more notes and more notes. <laughs> About the third note, she had Michelle Noble, who is now a lender and I believe an advertiser with you. I don't know. For I don't sure. know that name. No, she's been a lender for a long time, but yeah. back then she was our recep or the receptionist at the sales pavilion. Ah. She had Michelle call me and ask me if I would like to be a substitute agent, and I said absolutely. She said these ladies are gone all the time. They've made so much money. They're on cruises. They're yeah. in Europe. They're in Love New York. Life. Yeah. And so man, I had all kinds of floor opportunity. And uh, took it. Wow. Okay. So th this is a, uh, I think this is an important note for people. No doesn't always mean no. Correct. Right. No, no could just be not now. Not right. Now. Right. Just not now. Right. And I think that for, for, for young people listening to this, for agents listening to this is, is I want you to hear what Deborah's saying is that, you know, just because you got to no know, doesn't mean it's no forever. It doesn't mean it's no forever. And then you backed it up by continually reaching out, but you didn't pick up the phone. Oh no. Right. You didn't pick up the phone. You just wrote it a nice card, right? A nice little note. And you just kept sending it. And that's such a, a handwritten note is so powerful even today. Absolutely. So powerful. And, and look at what happened. So now you're substituting at the Dominion. Mm -hmm. Tell me about those first few opportunities. What was going on in Dominion? What year was this? 95. So the Middle golf course was done? Golf course was open. Okay. Yes. No, no, country no club country club. Open. Oh, yes. it was open. Oh. oh, yes. They opened in 85. Okay. Okay. The original developers. Okay. So 95, you know, they're 10 years in and new ownership. Okay. Entco out of Hawaii. Okay. Came in and bought it. And um, my, it was a long dry spell, Tomas, let me tell you. Really? I in said, 95? Oh, yes, because, you know, there's there was a pool of buyers in that price range then. Yeah. It wasn't large, you know. So this was 200 to how much? Like how high did they go? How one high point, were they going? At, the, at that time, it was $1.8 They were doing $1.8 in the Dominion in 95? In 95. Wow. And in, mm. no, in 96. 96, okay. And- I had some people walk in again from Dallas. It seems like I have really, really yeah. great people that come from Dallas. Yeah. And they bought that $1.8 million house. I had to show them everything else from a half million to that house. And they bought it. And they said, yeah, we'll do this. Wow. So tell, walk me through that. Because that, had you sold a million dollar house at that point? Uh -uh. No. Oh, no, no, no. So, no. but, but I'm, okay. I'm, th <laughs> I'm thinking in my mind, right? Cause even today, an agent, if they know they're, they're touring a million dollar home, it's like, you know what I mean? Like sure. I can't imagine at that point in 96, you're touring a 1.8, you're touring one, 1 1.5, whatever you walk them through 1.8 and they're like, we'll take it. What's going through your mind? Okay. I didn't really know what to say, how to respond yeah. other than just say, okay, yeah. let's write it up. And yeah. you know, that was what Nancy always told me that time is the biggest killer Gosh. of a real estate deal. So I knew not to waste time. We were sitting at the country club having lunch and we went directly back to the sales pavilion and wrote that offer. And Ralph Armstrong, God love him, was on the other side and we made it work. You, like you said, you put the puzzle together. It was a puzzle. Yeah, it was a puzzle. Okay. And, um, and, and then what, what is that house? What street is that house on? Do you Carriage remember? Carriage Hills. Carriage Hills. Krista Bozeman just sold it not long ago. Re I know uh, that house. Yeah. That's a killer Beautiful house. house. Beautiful house. I think she had it on the market for, was it over two, three? Oh, yes. It's, I believe it was well over two. It was beautiful. Uh, that pool, the view. The view. That was I the, know that house. Of, yeah, that was the developer street. Okay. All the original developers built on Carriage Hill. On Carriage Hill. Interesting. And Phil Romano, of course, built on Carriage Hill. Okay. So going back to that time, I mean, any. it's funny. 
if I talk to anybody about real estate, that's not in real estate. Any, like, you know, you, you, an Uber driver, if you're, you know, whatever. And you, you, you just ask them if you're in San Antonio and said, well, what neighborhood do you think is like, where all the, you know, where does everybody live? Where, where do all the basketball players live? Where, where do, uh, Domin- the ni- for number one neighborhood is the dominion, the Absolutely. dominion. It's, and it's been like that ever since I moved to San Antonio. Me too. Even to this day, right? Do you yes. get the same thing if anybody moves in? Yes. Tell you one quick story. A really good buddy of mine who's on the podcast, Jared was on the podcast. He was a, a, a tech guy. He was looking at Austin. Oh. Okay. Looking at Austin. It's got, you know, oh. it's got, he's, I really want to live there. It, somehow, some way, his, 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 um, I think it was his realtor said, well, you may want to consider like, I mean, if, 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 if distance, if you don't, location's not a big deal, maybe San Antonio. Let's look. And so the first place he came to Dominion, he pulls in the gates and goes, I'm sold. We're, we're, this is where I'm moving to San Antonio, wow. Texas. This was in 2022. This just happened. This just happened. So to this day, it's still, the Dominion has that powerful effect to really draw people in, you know, what do you, what do you think it is about the neighborhood, about the development that even to this day still draws people? The security. Mm. I think the security has always been a big deal. And I mean, face it, the infrastructure is gorgeous. It is. It's now how old, you know, open in 85, the estates opened in 85. So what's that math? See, I'm still not good at math. It's over 40. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks a little bit like Alma's Park now, those canopies of those oak trees, just shading those beautiful houses and boulevards. It was just, it it, it was just such a beautiful infrastructure, the Cantera balustrade, all of the wonderful mm-hmm. amenities at the country club and it had a really really nice golf course it was yes. far from most people's standpoint in san antonio but as san antonio grew a little bit more yeah and now you don't even think it about got, it mm, mm, and it got more and more rave reviews yeah. of course you know we hosted the seniors tournament for years i didn't know that yeah Which it was one? the vantage really the P- yeah the pgic i Absolutely. I did not know that. Hang out with the wives. That's super cool. awesome. I bet y'all sold a lot of houses from that. We did. I bet you sold a lot of houses. Yeah. Absolutely did. Now we are going to do, we got the Valero Texas Open coming up, which I know you were a lot, did a lot with that back in the day. Yes. Right? And and so um, we're actually going to do golf course neighborhood feature. Oh, Good. So we want to do like we want to focus on houses that are in golf course communities. And when I think of San Antonio, the Dominion is just iconic. It's just one of those iconic neighborhoods that people love. But going back through the history, I, I mean, you've seen it from 95 all the way till, 20, you know, this year. And what are you seeing are the trends now for buyers, what are what are buyers looking for when you when you think about Dominion, when you think about Cordillera, you think about these neighborhoods? What are some of the things that you're seeing that people are like, I've got to have this one story, ooh, sprawling, yeah, lots of square footage on without a step in it, no steps, no steps, no step ups or downs mm. tends to be a real real hot button for a lot of people. Um, even though they say they don't want a pool, yeah, they want a pool. If you're spending that's interesting that number of dollars, yeah, you want to look out and see that water, even know. though you may never touch it. Exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> or anybody else. Isn't that funny? Exactly. That's true though, because if I if I'm buying a million or one point five million, I'm gonna think that that. This should have a pool, but that makes sense. That makes sense. Now we had a house that you had on the cover a while back that we shot a video in that Soren got to go. Oh yes. Oh my goodness. That house was amazing. Talk about that house Uh, uh, that was on the cover. What street was it on? Um, Lazy Hollow. Lazy Hollow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the, cause that was, you have a client that likes to go in and I don't want to say remodel. I, 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 I would even just say reimagine just, it's a whole different level of, of touch mm-hmm. of thought. Mm-hmm. Remodel is just not the right word. No, it's more about, you know, preparing it, 
may it's hair makeup, you know, you do it with florals, you do it with, you know, a bed that is made so well that you can bounce a quarter off of it. Yeah. You don't ever want to see anybody's bed skirt no. liner. You know, I'm just very, very picky about such as that. Yeah. That house was huge and still is obviously, but it took very little just moving a few things around to, to create the perfect scale. Yeah. And I really never knew much about scale until I sold 40. I don't know. Do you remember 42 vineyard, the three story? It looks kind of Frank Lloyd Wrightish. Um, uh, is it the two deck pool? Is that, Oh no, no. I know exactly what you're talking about. Story. Yes, 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 yes. I know yes. that house. Yep. Yes. Crazy and house. It, really cool. My seller, I had the listing was from, the Tri-City area. So mm -hmm. she had, you know, Terrell Hills, traditional Amos Park, Alma mm -hmm. Heights sort of taste, but it didn't fit in this semi-contemporary house. Mm -hmm. So a um, company came in and they just redistributed. I think she bought like five throw pillows from them and they're an interior design mm -hmm. firm. But they put everything to scale. I had it reshot. I remember the photos, photos of that. Yep. And it sold within a month. It had been on the market for, uh, I want to say about a year. Yeah. But it was three and a half million dollars back right. then too. So. Right. And it was a three story with the master on the third floor. Yeah. So there were a few little things to get over. There was no fencing. It was on a hilltop. No. So I thought there isn't a prayer of anyone with children buying this. Right. People from um, Chihuahua, yeah. I believe, had two-year-old twins, bought that house. No no issues. None. Isn't that interesting? They just put up a fence, built a retaining wall. Here. Yeah, but that um, was a cool house. Very cool. Such a it cool was house. A, it was really first... You yeah, know, in that that sort of flavor of architecture in the Dominion. Yeah, and so so one story is the big, it's a right? Big. Like make sure that it has a, a pool, mm -hmm. right? And then understanding scale, and 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 helping your uh, sellers understand that that's important. Yes, without hurting their feelings. Yeah, and by scale too, it's 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 furniture fitting basically the in the way that makes it functional is that kind of the idea yeah i think so i think you know it it details the footprint of the room mm. and it opens views up that maybe sh or hidden by the back of a chair you right. know there you know of course little rules of thumb that are often broken but sometimes for good reason other times not you know don't ever want to walk in the front door and not see your pool or walk into the back of a piece of furniture Mm. So, you know, little, just little idiosyncrasies that I would have never known, but there are such good people yeah. in the staging or preparation business of luxury homes that it's almost unheard of. Oh, well, it is not considered. I use a uh, stager just about for every yeah. I have, unless, you know, the, the owner is just impeccably talented. And Which is rare. Right. Which is rare. It's I would say it's probably two thirds to a third. Okay, About a third of of the homeowners. Well, just for example, look a third at, guy know how to set mm -hmm. it up, and two thirds are like they need a little help. Right. Okay, Remember that makes sense. Arnold Palmer that you did your video in. Uh, oh yeah, yes. I mean, she's yes. she's just got it. Yeah, yeah. She that's true. Is amazing. Yeah, that's true. And she did the one on Mayboro that I was. I, that yeah, was a that cool one, one on too. the cover. That yeah. one, you're right. The furniture for that house was like, I, did she sell it with the furniture? Because you almost, yeah, they, she did. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's crazy. They should have bought that furniture because it was know. perfect. Well, they bought some, but some I don't, it? I try to stay out of the true, furniture that's true. business. That's hard. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't. I always, I always sell it by, look, you don't want to pay commission on furniture. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, <laughs> that's smart. works every time. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. Okay, so now niche properties. Founder, you found the, the 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 start of this brokerage. Tell me just the the uh, and we talked about the purple. We talked about some of the reasons of kind of what led to it, right? And 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 
But talk a little bit about the starting of this and creating a brand that really, I mean, it's it's all like this, this, it's Deborah Chains. It's it's luxury, it's all of that all rolled up, but it's also an opportunity to show other agents kind of the legacy of what you've done for so long. Right. Yes. Yes. So talk a little bit about niche properties and kind of the the the, the idea of starting it and, and kind of where you envision it growing. Well, we've grown um, to Bryan College Station. We have two agents there. Love we it. are getting ready to. We have eight here, two there, no seven here, two there, and now two more in Dallas. So I want it to be very agent centric. I'm not a big believer in a lot of. I don't want to have so much overhead that I can't work with my clients to make that deal close. Mm. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's, I envision it continuing to be quality as opposed to quantity in Mm. the agent arena for me. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, care about having 300 agents, you know, to have to hire, you know, staff to serve. Right. A good assistant is invaluable. If you get a good assistant or two, that's really, you know, you can manage, yep. especially with the younger agents that I have working for me. They're all so tech savvy. It's ridiculous. True. You know? yep. I, on the other hand, have an assistant for that. Yep. <laughs> but um, I think that it will become a service company more so than a real estate company. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. We have wonderful people who are all willing to help their clients and do whatever it takes to get their household, to get their children picked up from school, you know, to make a bed if we need to. There's yeah. nothing really that, I mean, within reason that we won't do. For sure. Um, but I think service is kind of the the thing that all of us at this time are realizing after the pandemic we miss mm-hmm. customer service yeah. so much in a lot it's of true. areas. Yeah, it's very, very true. So, very, very true. Yeah, I want to make sure that that's priority and that each of the agents with Niche are recognized for their work, Yeah, that brand themselves properly along with the company name mm. and are successful. Yeah, that's 100%. And how many agents do you have now? I just added one last Friday, so let me see. I think there are, right now we have eight, yeah. and we'll soon have 11. Wow, that's Since exciting. November. That's exciting. Yeah, it really Very, is. very exciting. And I, again, I we talked and you said, hey, I'd love for you to come in and do kind of like a workshop and facilitate. Man, did you ever and, knock it out of the park? Well, oh thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. That was so much fun. So much fun. And I really appreciate the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working on that. Gave us so much direction and cohesiveness. Good. That everyone remarked after how much that meant to them. It gave Mm -hmm. them what they needed to feel like, okay, we've got the right direction. We've got it going on. We're going to keep going forward. We're going to keep writing notes. We're going to keep empowering our clients. We're going to keep being fair and honest and ethical with our clients at all costs. And we're going to stay a boutique. I learned from some fabulous women in San Antonio, Texas, Kathleen Cooper. Oh yeah. I mean, She's just incredible. Besides being a wonderful, wonderful lady, gracious, gracious. Mm-hmm. Phyllis Browning. Yeah. I watched her for years and saw such grace yep. and kindness from this lady that I was inspired, but not enough to get my broker's license necessarily, yeah. you know, yeah. until I finally realized, you know, it's not a bad thing to yeah. go out on your own. I remember... Years ago, a mutual friend of ours, yes. Matthew, uh, the reason I'm in your magazine probably. Oh, yeah, that's a good reasons, story. One of the big reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, asked yes. me probably 15 years ago, why are you not out on your own? Mm. Nobody knows who you're with. Yeah, 
Yeah. I said, well, I don't know, you know, kind of like the keeper said, I like the, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. And, you know, he turned out to be exactly right. Yeah. I transferred 33 listings when I left Cooper over to Portfolio. Mm -hmm. And my largest listing was that ranch in Comfort, the sports ranch. I remember it. Yep. And we were negotiating while they were watching their daughter in a volleyball tournament in Dallas. Yeah. And um, I said, well, I'm moving to a new company. Well, who are you with now? <laughs> and I had had <laughs> their house the listing, $6 million listing, and they had no idea. No idea. It's so interesting. It is. I think that's, I think that's something that agents, I think they need to hear that in, 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 and hear it in, in, in several ways. I think they need to hear that from the perspective of, uh, I think there are brokerages that can really give you a lot of knowledge, understanding. They can help you grow and not discounting that, right? Like not discounting the growth of what these brokerages can do. Absolutely. But I also think there comes a point where from a standpoint of how you've grown your business that you can grow beyond that. Right. Like kind of yes. like what Matthew was talking about. And so here you are, you, you, you've started it. I'm, and I'm so excited for you. Thank I'm you. curious too, what would you say new agent, somebody walks up to you and they say, Deborah, I want to be a luxury agent like you. <laughs> I want to be in luxury. How do I do it, Deborah? Uh, you sink or swim mm. is essentially how you do it. I couldn't spell luxury when I started at Dominion. Yeah. I hadn't been in million dollar houses. I mean, a little bit in Bernie, but not that much. Uh, Leah Glast was my client for the first 10 years when they moved here and she kept me afloat, you know, Mm. because she'd buy and fix up and flip and make a gazillion dollars and move on to the next one. Mm. But it's really more about just getting in the trenches and learning from your buyer mm. because your buyer obviously has very elevated taste. Yeah. So listen, listen, listen. If I could say anything to a new agent, the art of listening. Mm. I, I listen. I, I'm so glad you said that because new agents, that's the one thing that's probably the hardest for new agents, right? It's, it's, um, I heard this, uh, said, uh, the, to keep the word wait, and if you spell it out, wait, is why am I talking? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, that's good. Isn't it good? It's like, right. wait, why am I talking? Wow. The, p- the power of that is, is you could be in cer- certain, certain situations with, with certain clientele that because you're constantly talking, you talk yourself right out of a sale. Absolutely. Right? I'll, I'll tell on myself. Um showing a house in the Dominion and every inch of flooring, walls, countertops Mm. was pink, Mm. all pink. And I had buyers walk in one day and they wanted to see that house. I took them and I said, now let me just warn you that everything in this house is pink. Mm -hmm. And the wife looked at me and said, my favorite color. I thought, oh, Deborah, you (laughs) idiot. (laughs) I never, ever <laughs> imposed my opinion right. ever yes. yeah. again. That's a good point. Because you don't know. You That's just a don't really know. good point. Yeah. Did they buy the house? Yes. She bought the house. Get out of here. <laughs> Absolutely. It was like, she, and she didn't paint anything? She oh, it? I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know whether they did or not. I'm going to guess they probably That's did. That's hilarious. Isn't I that know. funny how that works? Yeah, well, really what was the uh, most difficult sale you ever had to do? Most your most difficult sale, would you say? Gosh, that's hard. And why? What what made it difficult? Now you don't have to no names. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, every time nearly every time I do one, I'll say that's it. Never doing another one. Mm. And then it'll be somebody that I truly love and I'm sorry. And, and you want to help. You know, I want to help. Yeah. So, but yeah. those are typically the most difficult. Mm. I'll just generalize that way. We shared one of those. We had a party at one of those. That was uh, an epic uh, party. And you know what? I think back on that, Deborah, it probably worked out for the best. 
because that was the second luxury home magazine party. And we moved it to Dan Cook. Uh, we moved it to Dan Cook's house to cook. Um, buddies. Buddy oh, Cook. But we moved we it to moved Buddy, to buddy Cook's right. house. I forgot about that. Remember, remember that? it was little bitty and there were so many, so many people. people. It was packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that ended up being probably one of the best situations having in the Dominion because there you go. The Dominion comes up again. The first two parties were in the Dominion. Yep. It was at the first one was at Ann Van Pelt's. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Queens Heath. Yes. And and then the second one was at at, at Buddy Cook's house. Yes. Uh, I don't know why I said Dan Cook. I think that's a sports that's a reporter. Sports. <laughs> yes. God rest his soul. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> he was hilarious. Great, though. Yeah. Okay. So I guess to, to you know, kind of wrapping this up, I, I'm, I'm always curious is, you know, when you think when you think back on your your time in real estate, what do you, what do you think are the bread and butter? Like the, the, you said, listen, I think, which is critical, right? You want to be a luxury agent and listen, but what do you find now that, that, that if you go knowing what you know now, you're like, Oh, I, I learned that lesson here. I need, I, I wish I would have learned that sooner. I learned this lesson yeah. here. What are some of those that kind of stick out? There are so many, you learn a lesson with every deal. I mean, it's just a fact. There is something that there is a, de a lesson to be had with every single deal because they're all different. Yeah. And so you learn adaptability. Mm. You learn a little bit of psychology. Mm, you know? Yes. Um, it's just, I think, just doing what you feel like in your gut is the right thing to do and listening adapting, being flexible enough, mm. and always being available. Mm. Talk about that, that last part, being available. Yeah, you, I don't not answer my phone ever. Yeah. I always answer my phone yeah. and texts or email, whatever. And that's very important because, again, time is an enemy yeah. of a real estate time, deal. Time kills deals. It kills deals. I mean, time kills deals. That's, That's so important. Truth. I find it shocking, uh, Deborah, that I will talk to agents and and they'll say, listen, I I called this listing and and they didn't air, they, they didn't answer your phone. I I've sent them the an offer and I I'm, they haven't heard back and isn't that crazy? I don't I don't understand how you're I in the business. <laughs> Are you are, are you independently wealthy? I guess that, that could I be. don't know. That could be right. That could be. But I know some independently yeah. wealthy people that are real estate agents that answer their phone and return every time. their calls every time. Yeah, that's very very true. Yeah. So we got to go way back because there's one story that we haven't touched on. Uh -oh. Yeah, we got to talk about Willie Nelson, <laughs> and you shared a story with me that I think everybody needs to hear. I think it's such a great story, Thomas. but you got to, you got to share your Willie Nelson story. Everybody needs to hear this, Deborah. Oh my gosh. From you on the Team oh, 3 podcast. Man. Yes. Wow. Well, I like him a lot. You're a big Willie <laughs> fan. A big, major Willie Nelson fan. Have a yeah. big painting uh, up at the lake over my sofa that like takes up the entire wall. Love great, it. Great, great artist, Cameron Duncan Austin has made a living now out of painting Willie. But anyway, it, back in the day at Southwest Texas State, you know, we were poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't have any money. Our parents gave us like $10 a week Ooh. for incidentals. Okay. They paid our school, our you know, every yeah. essential expense. But spending money, you got very little, you know. Yeah. Enough for gas, and that was about it. So we went to a Willie Nelson, my two friends that I was telling you about earlier, I've known since first grade, we talked our way in to a benefit concert. <laughs> I mean, literally. So this is, you couldn't get tickets for this, right? We didn't have any you money. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> no. So three beautiful young ladies. Yes. All 19-ish. All probably. walked up and said, we need to be here. We're please, Willie Nelson fans. please. please. <laughs> Just begged him. I didn't hear this part of the story, but continue. Well, the you know, he just kind of, all right. We walked in. We're looking around. It was packed, just yeah. packed. It was a friend of Willie's benefit concert that was fighting cancer. Of some okay. Sort. Well, there were three, just happened to be three seats on the front row 
right Stop. next to Hondo Crouch. Stop. And so we just walked up there and sat in like they were ours. Was he already playing or was it a different no, band no, yet? No, okay. He okay. hadn't come on yet. We just sat there and yeah. acted like we were supposed to be there. And uh, he played for like three and a half hours. He Are you was just serious? Amazing. Anyway, long story short. After his concert, he jumped down into the middle of all of these people, right? And everybody's wanting an autograph, and he's signing autographs. And um, he got to me. I said, I don't have a pen, and I don't have a paper. He said, would you like a kiss? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. You bet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he was probably 20 years older than yeah, me, Yeah. 22 years older than me. Yeah. And um, that's my claim to fame. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Now, what did your friends say? They get no. I mean, at this point, oh, they were no, just you know, no pictures. Or, there's no picture. No, of this. we didn't have. Yeah, there's no cameras. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it was that just spur of the moment kind of how it happened. I'll never know, but I certainly won't ever forget. You it. won't ever forget it. I love that <laughs> I story. I love, I love that. that story. That's awesome. And I did realize that you had to figure out a way to get into the benefit in order to make that magic happen. Well, I didn't, wasn't planning on any magic. I right. just wanted to hear Willie Nelson. You just wanted to hear Willie <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah, I love that. that but I love that. I love that. Funny. Well, Deborah, listen, uh, it's been a joy to work with you over the last so many years. I mean, it's going on 13 years, Deborah. Is that <sighs> crazy? You remember I sitting at the believe. Dominion Country Club, me, you, Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew and Janet Key. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and I watched Matthew sell you luxury he home did. magazine. Yeah, and then he didn't sign up. No. After I signed, he goes, okay. We done. waited. He waited. He waited to the very last minute and yeah. then he jumped in. Then he you jumped know, in. then he jumped in. Yes. But uh I've but, been very, very blessed by Luxury Home magazine. It has kept a presence in my career. Always. It is the only thing I would never give up. Ah, uh, thank you, I Deborah. I really, really love the magazine. It just is beautifully done and it's on everybody's coffee table in yeah, thank luxury you. homes. You've done a wonderful job. I watched you and Christina. You know, y'all were just babies when I we met were. you at Cooper at Dominion. Oh yeah. Very and much so. I met clueless. Oh, well, but you were there all the time. That was good. <laughs> yes, yes, and we were. Yeah. Yes, we were. So I think uh, Christina actually gathered a lot of intel oh, in the copier yes. room from me one time. She told me about that meeting. She did. She did. <laughs> yes, yeah, she told me about that meeting. That was yes. funny. She got my business. Yes, she I love did. that. I love that. Well, Deborah, thank you for being on TM3 thank Podcast. You. Any final words of wisdom for agents out there, for anybody that's, you know, moving to San Antonio, maybe even buyers that are coming? Any words of wisdom? Well, absolutely. You couldn't make a finer choice than moving to the San Antonio, greater San Antonio area, Texas Hill Country. We're just, you know, such a prime market right now. Yeah, I agree. I think Austin is probably a little bit um, oversaturated. I know yeah. the pricing is off the charts, but it is. Um, you know, just. Find someone who you trust and you feel comfortable with mm -hmm. because you're going to spend a lot of time with them and it's a huge investment. So I'm very fortunate to have um, my agents in Bryan College Station who have done, you know, actually a development sale last year wow. in Conroe That's awesome. out of Bryan College Station. So it's funny how that has transpired into some, I mean, clearly no one knew they were brand new agents, yeah. but extremely, extremely smart. And I'm very grateful for them. And I'm looking forward yeah. to the new two in Dallas. And I love each and every one of them are uh, the cohesiveness. I would say to a new agent, mm -hmm. be where you're comfortable. Mm. Comfort is a very, very important thing yeah. in real estate. And I think your clients pick up on that. Yeah. And they know you're not out just to write a contract or whatever. You genuinely have their best interest at heart. So I love that. Well, thank you, Deborah. Thank, thank you so much. You. you did amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. You did amazing. Thank you for being on the TM3 podcast, my friend. You're so we'll sweet. We'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>